Welcome to Life Blood. This is George G. And the time is right. Welcome to today's guest, the strong and powerful Jeremy Kubitschek. Jeremy, are you ready to do this? Let's do it, George. Fired up. Let's go. Jeremy is the executive chairman of Giant. They are a tech company focused on unlocking the potential of people, teams, and organizations. He's an entrepreneur, thought leader, and a best-selling author. Jeremy, tell us a little about your personal life, some more about your work, and why you do what you do. Yeah, so I've spent my life, I've lived in Russia, I've lived in Atlanta, London, and Oklahoma City doesn't all go together, but they do, right? So I'm from Oklahoma, but I've lived my life in a way that, um, how do I actually get people healthy, and then teach them to multiply the health to the people that they lead? And that's what I do. I help people. Nice. That's that that is that is a very succinct way to describe it. So thank you for that. <laughs> Um, and, and, and how did Giant come to be? Um, I started in 2002, right before I got hit by a drunk driver in a hurricane in Cancun. And it had a big I, big G-I-A-N-T. And as soon as we get hit, I uh, almost died. Uh, long story there. Uh, and when I came back from Mexico to actually start the startup, we squashed the I to a little I. So giant is a big G and little I. It stands for humility, not pride. I think a lot of the pride was knocked out of me. And so the idea was actually, how do you help people learn how to develop them and teach them to develop others? And so um, we did that in 2002. We then bought companies like John Maxwell's assets. We used to own the, the leader cast. I started the leader cast brand, catalyst conferences, all these different events and partnerships with thought leaders. And then somewhere around 2012, um, I woke up realizing that 21st century learning uh, wasn't seminars and books. That was not the tra trajectory. And I started playing with 21st century learning and how do a cynical know-it-all adults who don't read anymore, how do they learn? So that's where I'm at. And have you figured it out? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I have figured it out it's unbelievably simple. You have to, it's, it's, uh, and unbelievably hard to get there. We created content for an educated 13 year olds and the educated 13 year olds is the secret to scaling inside corporations, companies, teams, because you, there's so much time. Uh, you don't have much time because everyone is making their donuts. They're serving their customers. They're doing the work They're It's just the, habitual process of just work, right? So training and learning is not uh, an offsite. I mean, you can do that, but that's, there's, there's dynamics that can happen while you're working. So the idea is while you're working on other tools, so we've, we created about 70 or so visual tools that almost like tattoos on your brain. You see the tool, it creates objective language, that language produces um, an opportunity to correct or s become self-aware. And then you can look at it as a mirror. And then you see the broccoli in your teeth. You take the broccoli out yourself. That's called self-awareness. Then if you help other people take the broccoli out, that's where you start developing them. All you have to do is show them the tool, the visual. And the visual can be drawn on a piece of equipment in a greasy manufacturing line, which I've seen. Or it can be written on a cocktail napkin, or it can be drawn on a whiteboard, but it's a, a really powerful tool done in a very fast way. And it's the way that adults learn because of these little devices that we have. And we're so visual that everything has got to be succinct. Is it literally in, in, an image of something? Yes. So it's, it's, uh, there's images infinity loops, there's squares, there's certain uh, images, and then there's words associated with the image and a process associated with it. So it literally is a visual tool. It's not like uh, the complex leadership jargon tools. It's uh, really simple. Uh, it's also a phrase. It could be a phrase like, um, be interested before being interesting. Simple little phrase, right? Uh, relationship before opportunity and it stays with you when you start thinking call people up not call people out so those are the types of things that work at home with your kids 
but they also work with a team and they're easier to, to go. Yeah. Call people. Out. Oh my gosh. I'm calling them out. Aren't I? How do I call them up? How do I call them up? So it's that type of phraseology tools set, if you will. And then our, my business is simply, I certify coaches and consultants to add this to their repertoire and a very low cost way. They just add giant into their, if they're already, or if they're a part-time coach or want to be a coach, they can do it on the side. And it's a really fascinating, almost like amateur psychologist meets leadership meets apprenticeship type of process. And so you've developed a, a toolkit, a suite of these models, images in yeah, different. Yeah. And yeah, we have, we've created, uh, we'll call them power tools and precision tools, depending on what you're doing with them. And, um, but it's in an operating system. So we basically have a software operating system. So uh, there's a coaching dashboard that uses the tools to coach people. If that's what you want to do. Uh, we have something called altitude training and it's leaders who lead people. We call them Sherpa. The Sherpa uh, the mentality is that you have to perform and help others perform. So the Sherpa have to be the healthiest people in the room it, on Mount Everest. You don't want to follow an asthmatic Sherpa up the mountain, right? There's no, there's, it's just not, you don't want Sherpa smoking packs of cigarettes, <laughs> but that's the problem with leaders is most of them are, um, are not, are not healthy. And the leader needs to be the healthiest person on the team, ideally. So that's the, that's the mindset. So we have uh, DEI, uh, we have um, all types of, you know, uh, real issues, but we've giantized them and put them into tools so that the conversations and the action and the speed of learning happen faster. And it's just a 21st century style of learning. The 20th century, we're, we're finishing it. And COVID really, really affected it. it. COVID, the benefits of COVID is it forced technology to become more mainstream. Uh, but it also, um, some of the learning styles and some of the things that are naturally happening and evolving towards, we're just moving to them faster. And we believe that we are on to uh, the learning style of the future and it's being adapted and, and put into the, to the water stream faster now because of COVID. Um, so, yeah, that, 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 that makes a lot of sense to me. You mentioned an educated 13 year old and I, maybe I missed how that all plays in. Is that what this is sort of you, you proven that it works on a 13 year old, therefore it can work yeah. on a dummy like me kind of a thing. That's it. Yes. And I'm not saying you're a dummy, but I'm saying Certainly not. George G, if George G can get it. No, but, but it's, it's true. You know, you think about like inside an organization, um, the complexities like take Harvard, Harvard is awesome, but the Harvard content is called cul-de-sac learning. It's awesome in the cul-de-sac, but a lot of people don't know how to take it and transfer it. Like, like if I, if I read a Harvard article right now and I'm contemplating it, I might use it, but if I try to train you and then tra you train someone else and they train someone else, it will not get very far because unless we were all in the cul-de-sac together and we learned it together in the same room and we had the same competency and the same interests and so on and so forth. But if I said this to you, I said, George, um, look, the best leaders in the world bring high support and high challenge. All right. High support, high challenge. What does support mean? What does challenge mean? And then I say, so what's your tendency when you think of your kids? Do you bring too much support? Ah, oh, you might bring support to one and not enough challenge to another, or you bring too much challenge and not enough support to the other. So support with no challenge means enabling or protecting. Challenge with no support means domination. But high support, high challenge is to liberate. It's to empower, not overpower. Well, I can train that in a visual. I can train it on a cocktail napkin or a whiteboard. And I can get a 13 year old to understand here's what support looks like. Here's what challenge looks like. So where are you at? So when you teach something to that level, it has the chance to spread and sprawl. 
So we get the opportunity to work with Google. We work with like Lidos and Pfizer and the U S air force, and they train on these tools because they scale so much faster because it's like a language and it's an objective language. It's not subjective because subjectivity is where all drama comes from. If I'm like, you know, George, you need to step it up, man. Are we cool? I mean, I need you to like get the next level, right? right. And you're like, what does uh, that even mean? What does that mean? <laughs> or, you know, sometimes your leadership just, and you're like, yeah, that's just jargon. But if I go, hey, George, I'm noticing like where, here's the mirror, sport challenge. Where are you right now? What are you noticing about your leadership with your team? Where do you think that they would put you on the sport challenge page? So you, I've given you now language and a mirror and you can answer it. And it, it has more, it has more action tied to it because we agree to the same language. I absolutely love it. So the support piece comes in where you're holding this mirror up to me and let's just go with leadership skills. And I say, okay, we, well, uh, now that you're showing me this, it does seem like I am, I am deficient or not quite up to par where, 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 where I want to be as a leader. The support is here are the tools or how can you help me skill up, level up? Yep. Yeah. So the first part is self-awareness. So are you aware you have broccoli in your teeth? And then once you do, then that language is in, then I just can, I can give some challenge. So if, if you know that I'm for you, then I, and I would say that, Hey, George, you know, I'm for you, right? Well, that mm -hmm. means challenge is about to come. If you know, I'm for you then I'm fighting for your highest possible good, then I'm going to show you where you're undermining your influence. And, but I can show you through a tool. Now, if I show you through a tool, it's like a mirror and I can pick any one of these tools here. And I know this is on a podcast, but these are some of the tools. This is an infinity loop. I can take that visual and there's words attached to it. And there's basically, I can say, so let's go and do a tendency log here. So what's your tendencies, George? Uh, I have a tendency to exaggerate. Yep. Okay. So when do you do it and why do you do it? Uh, when I'm trying to prove myself. Okay. And what do you normally do? Add three to the conversation. And what are the, what are the consequences? Uh, people sometimes don't believe me. And what's that reality? They may not trust the words I say. All right. So you will always have a tendency to exaggerate. That's okay. So just know it. So when, then when it's about to happen, you can change your actions. You can't change your tendency. You can change your actions. Don't add three. Don't add three. Don't add three. Got it. Just tell the truth. There's five, not eight. There's five. So that's just an example of, but what we do is, and I've found, I have 29 tendencies that I've found through this tendency log, this, this little, one little tool, but you take that tool and you can, you can play with it with other tools and you can overlay them. And then I'm like, huh, why do I do that? When do I do that? What could I do different? And when am I going to do it? And you create this opportunity for learning to happen that didn't happen in a seminar or a retreat once a year. It happened in your team meeting or it happened on the way home. So I have this little, I have a little process that I do to manage myself, which uh, you cool if I share it, please. All right. So uh, it's every night before I go to bed, I figured out because I'm a feeler and my emotions can sometimes get uh, they can get wrinkled. I can get overwhelmed by a thought or a feeling or a, a negative can come in and I can get, I, I can lead to irrational thought. It's not true. I just get all worked up. I know that about myself. So to manage myself, um, at, every, almost every night, I didn't do it last night for whatever reason, but almost every night I pick a theme for me over me. Uh, theme might be eradicate negativity. Uh, theme might be, uh, enjoy uh, it's just a, a theme and i i'm basically putting it into my brain so that my subconscious because my my conscious goes to sleep but my subconscious stays awake my brain is awake all night dreams everything but it's putting all the files up that have been opened by my brain consciously so i put a theme over me 
So there's a little bit more peace. I've sleep better. So that theme then starts going to work and my subconscious starts getting in order. When I wake up, I'm like, huh, yeah, eradicate negativity. That was my theme. I've already planted a seed for the morning. And then I do a call up exercise in the morning. I do a little workout routine, but I call myself up, not out. And it's not cheesy. It's not like Stuart Smalley kind of a thing. And it's like, yeah, doggone it. People like me. It's, it's not that it's just more of like, Hey dude, come on, man. You're a remember. And I don't, I don't go to email emails are other people's agendas. So I don't let other people's agendas uh, set the tone for my day. So I don't look at email until after I've gotten coffee. So anyway, so I work out, work out, I do this little call up exercise. I'm like, Jeremy, you're a liberator. You're a freedom fighter. You, you have to be, you're the healthiest guy in the room, whatever that is. And I'm getting my, my calling myself into my identity, who I am. Then I go out throughout my day. And then at five 30, I do this exercise. Um, it's that I stole it from the, it sounds bad. I say stole it from the Jesuits, <laughs> but I stole it from the Jesuits at the examine, but I took some of it and uh, I make it kind of simple. I do an exercise wherever I'm driving or wherever I am at five 30 every day. I do. What was, what were the highlights of the day? What am I thankful for? What were the, what were the big things that happened that I'm grateful for Two. So far as it depends on me, is there any negativity or anything that happened today that I need to work on? And yesterday, I'm like, why did I kind of wake up in a weird mood? But really, I was fine. So I didn't really have anything yesterday. And then, but sometimes I do. Why am I frustrated with them? Was it me or them? And I always start with me. Then the third piece is I look at tomorrow and I get organized and I think about my day and I prepare for it and I process it and almost visualize the day and I'm done. And then I go to bed and I'm at, my evenings are really peaceful because I process stuff. Then I set the tone, a theme for the night for my brain to do the work so that when I wake up in the morning, I'm usually very peaceful. Then I call myself up into it, which then my day is pretty peaceful. So I've been doing this routine and rhythm for about a year. It's been a game changer. And it's just, it gives me the ability to regulate myself, to work on myself. But then I have this tool set I can pull out at any time. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I did. What is that? What's that tendency? But I don't dominate myself. I liberate myself. I bring high support and high challenge to myself because every time there's some new learning about myself, I'm not dominating and putting myself down because I'm not calling myself out. I'm calling myself up. Make sense. I love it. It does. That's a great framework right there. I wonder what the Jesuits are going to say when they hear that you stole this from them. <laughs> <laughs> That's all awesome. royalties. It's gotta be public. Something. Man. Because you think it's in the public <laughs> Well, I think it's like 1640 or something okay. like that. Surely yeah, by now. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So every night you, you, you pick a theme. Um, mm -hmm. What are some examples? Uh, yeah. So again, eradicate. I want to eradicate negativity. I'm like, why do I have this negativity around these people or things? So that's like, I want negativity out of my life. Um, I just want to enjoy life. I want to enjoy my work tomorrow. Um, so that's just the, th you know, a theme, um, um, I could, you know, I've had some where I've done, I've thought about my daughter and I'm like, I want, how do I support her, you know, as a theme or it, it's just, you pick what is truly going on that you want to set right or, or you want to think about the next day, which is highly personal. You know, there's, there's some personal things too. So for sure. I love it. You know, we have these, these supercomputers between our ears right but if we don't take advantage of it if we're not giving the right inputs or or denying the wrong inputs like you're talking about not not checking email because that's somebody else's agenda i think that's a great way to put it uh, if we're not using our brain the right way well then we're just i mean that's okay but there's so many more opportunities to to, to optimize and make things better Absolutely.
Absolutely. So that's the process. I love it. Well, Jeremy, that was a really good one. The people are ready for your difference making tip. What do you have for them? You know, um, from the difference making tip is the, the idea that you can't give what you don't possess. Um, or said the positive way, you give what you possess. So everything is that you can give comes from the overflow of you. And so you have to be healthy. When you're healthy, uh, you have more to give. So focus on health and the overflow is what people will receive from you. Well, I think that that is great stuff that definitely gets to come on. Jeremy, thank you so much for coming on. Where can people learn more about you and how can they connect and get involved with Giant? Yeah, so uh, we've done something specifically for your audience. Uh, you can go to giantcoach.com slash lifeblood. So giantcoach.com slash lifeblood. And if you're interested, you can take uh, a free, uh, our, our assessment called the five voices will help you figure out uh, what your voice is and who, what people see you to be. Uh, that's an interesting one. Also, you can find out information about getting certified or becoming a coach or a consultant if you wanted to do this full-time or part-time, or if you're already a coach, you want to add this, these tools to your repertoire. It's uh, a really great community of people around the world. Awesome. Well, if you enjoyed this much as I did, show Jeremy your appreciation and share today's show with a friend who also appreciates good ideas, go to giantcoach.com slash lifeblood and check out all the resources that Jeremy was just talking about. And um, what a cool, cool thing that you've created, Jeremy, and a really cool system. And I'm excited personally to dig into it myself. So awesome. thanks again. Thanks, George. Cheers. And until next time, keep fighting the good fight. We are all in this together.